This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Back, we're live. We're having a wonderful day. I'm Jay Fidel on Think Tech. We talked to uh, uh, Vic Kraft earlier about uh, re returning to the drafts. That was very interesting. We talked to Roger Roger Epstein, a tax lawyer from Honolulu. He's in Washington now about the real deal and the Tax Reform Act. And now we're going to talk about art and community and more. Okay, with Sean O'Hara. And he is the new director. I don't know how new you are. You're not so new, huh? Yeah, yeah. Relatively nine, nine and a half months. A few months, yeah. 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 At the Honolulu Academy. In dog years. At the yeah. Honolulu Museum yeah. of Art. I said Academy. We were talking about that. The name changed. Yeah. What is the real name now, Sean? The Honolulu Museum of Art. Got it. <laughs> yeah. It's, okay. a, it's, it, it's, a, it's actually reflects the merger of the two museums, the Contemporary Museum of Honolulu and the Academy of Arts, uh -huh. uh, the Honolulu Academy of Arts. But, uh, but um, actually, it was the original name. Going back to the, the the 1920s. Yeah, fabulous. Um, so you you've had a kind of loop life. You you've looped from Hawaii to the mainland. You've done some fabulous things on the mainland. Yep. What did you do on the mainland? Then you came back. So uh, I uh, left uh, Honolulu as many uh, local kids do. Um, um, probably never look back again. You know, to sort of leave the rock. And uh, I was away for about 30 years. Uh, and I traveled uh, throughout the mainland and then uh, uh, in Europe and, and the UK. Um, and I, uh, uh, I'm lucky and fortunate enough to have the chance to come back home, which uh, again, you know, you know, I didn't know that was necessarily going to happen. And uh, to run the institution that uh, has had the biggest impact in my entire life, wow. uh, particularly as a kid growing up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, talk about that, will you? Why, why, what happened that, that had that impact on you? Well. Um, uh, my, uh, my, my parents uh, wanted to get me out of the house, and, 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 and you know, Hawaii, uh, in the 60s and 70s, uh, it, you know, I always described uh, daytime TV as a, as a get-to-work scheme, because it was just, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty awful stuff. So, uh, you know, the first thing you did uh, when you woke up was just get out, and, uh, and uh, there were a, a limited number of things to do. Um, and my parents thought, well, we'll just get him into art lessons, get him into music lessons. That's what you did. <laughs> get him out of the house. Um, and uh, and uh, my, my, my mother was the sort of type of mom who would, uh, you know, show up five hours to an airplane, you know, early to an airplane. So, uh, so uh, she would drop me off at the art academy uh, at, at, for an 11 o'clock uh, 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 lesson at about 9 a.m. So, so I'd be wandering the, uh, the the hallways for a couple hours before that lesson. Productive uh, time. Yeah, and then and then I had a I have a, a, a father who's a UH professor, um, and so he's uh, kind of late to everything. Uh, uh, and so um, you know he picked me up uh, at about you know it would end at about one and he'd pick me up about 3:30. Right. So, Perfect. So for about you know six hours I'd spend the time in the in the in the art academy, um, and then when it came to choosing a major. Um, really, I thought, I thought to myself, gosh, what, what were the most wonderful days of my life? And I thought, well, you know, it was the Art Academy, so maybe that's what I should do for, for a living. You know, what can I do for 40 years of my life, you know? <laughs> so, um, uh, but, but, but part of that... Uh, where, were you, where were you a major? Uh, I was at Harvard uh, as an art history major, mm -hmm. and, uh, and um, I, you know, I'm very grateful uh, to the Harvard Club of Hawaii because oh, they yeah. sent me on a scholarship yeah. out there. Yeah. And, uh, um, it just happened to be the furthest point uh, in the United States away from uh, my family, and you know I could like be on my own. Uh, and I can finally see seasons and you know all the things that you read about, which you never see as a kid in Hawaii. Um, but uh, but but I think the the time spent on my own uh, in the art academy was important because uh, I taught myself and. Uh, if, if you know about education, you, you, you know that uh, it's not about telling people the answer, it's about uh, br drawing the answer out of the, out of the student. <laughs> and so for me, I, 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 I wandered the art academy looking at the paintings and, and um, um, you know, um, I learned about female anatomy, for example. <laughs> in the, <laughs> sure. in the, uh, but I taught myself a lot of things. And it was, and it was, a, it was a, 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 a wonderful experience that, um, again, you know, stuck with me throughout my career. And so this is why I'm here. Yeah. Oh, that's great. 
uh, the, the prodigal uh, son uh, returns. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, <laughs> something like that, yeah. So what do you think of art, actually, in our society these days? This is not a small question. Well, I, I think our art is incredibly important now that we've realized that there isn't one way of communicating. Um, I, I think growing up, uh, a, a lot of education was prescribed, and I think that uh, 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 you know there was one way to do mathematics, there was one way to uh, interpret things. Uh, if you disagreed with a professor, then you were wrong. Um, I think now people have realized that there are many ways of viewing things, uh, many viewpoints, um, all equally valid, um, and uh, and many ways of communicating. And uh, in um, in schools now, the 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 objective is to give students the opportunity to grow and learn and become productive members of society. And if you're only concentrating on uh, a very uh, monodimensional sort of approach, uh, you're going to leave a lot of people out in the cold. Yeah. Um, so art and and other creative uh, forms of communication, uh, I think, are essential to in order to um, uh, create a society that, that is more productive. Yeah. Uh, because you'll have um, students and, uh, and, and people um, able to uh, pursue things in the way they think mo most effective. And, yeah. and, and also a quality of life for the individual. Uh, yes, and, and uh, quality of life and quality of life for the people who experience what these people create. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, really uh, interesting because I, I don't think there's much art uh, training going on in schools these days, am I right? Uh, yeah, and there are a lot of reasons for that. I think No Child Left Behind was, uh, was a program that, that, uh, that uh, helped reduce some of the art uh, teaching. Um, I think that it just had to do with uh, budget cuts and, and concentration, maybe an over-concentration on STEM, not fully realizing that STEM is only part of the discussion, that you can't have um, you know, sciences without without being able to communicate or humanities or or or, or other ways of thinking, um, uh, and uh, and uh, but you know the good thing is that, and it's obviously a two-edged sword. But you know, with the uh, 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 rise of the internet and with other forms of digital communication, we found ourselves in an incredibly visual world, uh, visual um, sound. Um, uh, I. You know, we don't read these manuals anymore uh, on, on uh, you know, oh. the equivalent of VCRs. We watch right. videos, right? right, right. So, um, so I think that uh, uh, there is a, a slow realization that uh, visual communication, uh, communication through sound, is as important as any sort of alphanumeric communication that we've been uh, um, concentrating on in the past. It's all art. It's all art. It's all communication. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, one of the, of course, you have various kinds of art at the museum, and one of the kinds of art, of course, and I'd almost forgotten, is, is film. You show films on a yes. regular basis. Right? Yeah, one of our most popular programs at the museum. Yeah, yeah. and this weekend is uh, Zato Ichi, yes. who, who was my idol when I was a kid, the blind swordsman. Mine too, yeah. mine too, <laughs> Zato Ichi, and, and this time he's going to meet Yojimbo because uh, uh, we've got uh, Toshiro Mifune uh, meeting uh, Zatoichi. <laughs> Fabulous. Yes, Fabulous. yes, yes. So where and when and yes. how can I sign up and go? Uh, well, uh, it's uh, happening at the Doris Duke Theater at the Holland Museum of Art. And the schedule is online. And you can buy your tickets online, even. And you just show up and, uh, you know, hang on for the ride. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. I, I really I want to see that because I, I really love the, what he did. He was kind of a... Is anti-hero the wrong word? I mean, he was the hero's hero is what he was. He was disabled, yes. and yet he could slice a fly in half without seeing him. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. Well, uh, w with a lot of humor as well. Yes, right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. droll yeah. humor. Yeah. So, uh, you know, let's talk about, let's talk about shows. Uh, yeah. Right now, you, you've organized a show um, involving uh, Jackson Pollock, um, Mark Rothko, Satoru Abe. Uh, oh, wow. Um, De Kooning. Uh, yep, yeah, yeah, Harry Suchidana. Yeah. yeah. It's world class, world class right here, not, not, not a mile <laughs> from where we're sitting. It is, it is. And, uh, and uh, our curator in charge of the exhibition, uh, Teresa Papanikolas, did a marvelous job um, working with all of her colleagues to create this. Um, this is, this is a, a profound show. Um, it's exactly what we should be doing at the Holland Museum of Art. Uh, it's exactly what our population um, wants and needs and, and desires. Um, because what it is, is it's an international level 
uh, 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 presentation. It, it brings in art from uh, museums around the world, um, like the artists you were talking about, uh, Jackson Pollock and, and Mark Rothko. Um, but it also talks about the connection between those artists who promote themselves as being in a vacuum. I mean, they're from New York, right? So they, <laughs> they're the center of the universe. Yeah. Um, and it connects them with the centuries-old tradition of abstract art in, in places like East Asia, particularly Japan. And then what it does is it also brings in uh, the folks in Hawaii and the folks uh, on the mainland, like on the West Coast, uh, and it tells their story. And, and there is this, there is this uh, connection and thread uh, going through all of these uh, art forms and, and, and art centers that we've never told because the canon, you know, the history focuses on specific centers, um, but they leave out other places like Hawaii. Yeah. Um, I have to say that we don't, uh, we haven't done ourselves m much of a service by um, believing this canon and and sort of downplaying our um, our contributions. But this exhibition sort of raises that level of contribution and shows um, how profound uh, a lot of our creative. Uh, people here are. Yeah, yeah, they can put it together. So yeah. how, how, how do you put together a show like this with such world famous names? Um, with a lot of effort and a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Hawaii, we have to ship everything in, so yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's logistically a, 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 a very intensive operation. Uh, and we have to use our networks. Um, you know, luckily we have uh, uh, professional staff with international connections, and so we're able to uh, speak to our colleagues around uh, the world and draw on those uh, connections to bring art. And that's what museums do. Museums are um, interconnected, and so the only way that they can actually uh, present any sort of uh, a major show like this is work with their colleagues in order to be able to present this material. So we. Uh, we call museums, and, and, and we, we trade art. I mean, we'll loan them something one year, and they'll loan us something the next year. And, uh, and this, is, uh, this is all, for the most part, free, because that's what we do. It's a part of our, um, our mission. Between the museums. Uh, and, and, yeah. and you'll reciprocate it to the extent Absolutely. you can later, and it's back and forth. And yeah. we live in a time when, when art and science are, they have international networks, and that's the, that's the best you can do to have an international network that will trade with you, yeah? Yeah, and, and, uh, and you know, going back to the exhibition, the content exhibition, you know, the reason why uh, those artists, and particularly artists in Hawaii, were so important was that they traveled the, the world, and they had these connections. Um, and, they, uh, and then they came back to Hawaii uh, after many years of travel and contributed to society here. So it was. Uh, it's. It is all about networks, and uh, um, being on an island, it, it it's even more important. Yeah, it is. We were talking before the show began about uh, David Koch. He was on mm. 60 Minutes. Yep. Uh, this big art supporter. Sunday. Yeah. Big art supporter, and yeah. uh, the show was not so much about his art, but about his wine, mm. where he had some bottles of Je Thomas Jefferson vintage wine that he was concerned about and felt they were fraudulent. So he spent 35 million dollars chasing down the fraudsters. And he actually caught them. Uh, but what was interesting is... You got his money's worth? <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, it's a relative term. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, uh, in, the, in the course of the show, uh, you could walk through with his house with him, mm -hmm. David Kogan, and you could see the art of the walls. It was all world-class art. I mean, it was, it was right. a collection mm -hmm. worth hundreds of millions, maybe billions of dollars right, right, right. there in the wall. And um, I asked you, well, do we have any David Kochs living in Hawaii? Do, do we have any people with collections like that? Answer probably no. Huh? Well, there, 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 there are there are many collectors, and uh, and from a museum's point of view, the value of the art doesn't really mean a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's really about the significance of the artist's contribution. Um, you know, a lot of the local artists that we have in the show, um, their values pale in comparison to um, you know the Rothkos and the, the Kleins and so on in the show. Um, but you know, as far as we're concerned, they're equally important. Um, and, and museums are, are, are quite well known for not placing value on the art. Yeah. So, uh, and part of that is, is, is because the markets go up and down. Um, we're a forever institution, so uh, we collect art and we hold on to it forever uh, for the benefit of our yeah. society. That's, a, that's the point I wanted to get to, yeah. is, that, is that you become um, the home of David Koch for us. In yeah. other words, if we want to see you know, world-class art, 
we have a place. We can come and see it. We can come and see the museum. Yeah, and I think that's what, um, you know, perhaps is a misunderstanding about museums. You know, museums are for certain people or, or you know, for people like the Koch brothers and so on. Um, really, uh, you know, a museum is a public institution. Uh, when Anna Rice Cook um, established the museum in the 20s, um, you know, her mission was to uh, take these great um, uh, um, masterpieces of, of human uh, creation and to share them with yeah. all the people. It's and all so about sharing. It, it's all about sharing. It's about education. It's about uh, um, it's about uh, uh, quality of life. It's about uh, enjoyment. Um, and uh, you know, a bit like uh, again uh, when I was a kid in the in the art academy. <laughs> you know, I was you know a kid from St. Louis Heights. You know, I mean, but I was wandering the art academy and I could uh, experience all these great. Uh, impressionist paintings, all these great Japanese prints. Yeah. 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 Well, that goes that goes to a question I, I really would like to ask you, and that is, when when I walk into the museum, this museum especially, mm -hmm. uh, and I want to have your kind of experience as a kid, mm. uh, what am I looking for? What what am I what am I uh, what am I my sensory perceptions? What do I want to find there? What is my thought process for appreciating the art in a way that I can have a takeaway and carry it home? Well, one, th one thing I would do is I wouldn't um, necessarily seek anything out. Uh, and I wouldn't sort of predetermine a path. I would sort of follow one's nose, and I would walk into any sort of gallery. Um, and I wouldn't, and I would try not to say, oh, you know, I don't like uh, in this type of ceramic, or you know, this sort of uh, artwork reminds me of my grandmother's house, or that sort of thing. <laughs> um, I really think that you, you should try to walk in and and you know, keep your mind totally open. Um, because the art on display at the Holy Museum of Art is some of the greatest artwork in the world. And so these artists who have something to say, they're the great philosophers of our, of our civilization, um, have something profound to say. So I would just keep your mind open, go up to any artwork, look very carefully, and I would spend more than the few seconds that one normally spends in front of artwork. I would try to spend several minutes looking at it and maybe even come back to it and spend another several minutes and try to build up as much time. Because uh, the more you look, the more you learn. And, it's, and it's, it, it, a lot of the great art is not obvious at first. Um, uh, perhaps it's very complicated. So I would, say, I would say give it a lot of time. People don't spend time looking anymore. Yeah, yeah. And the great thing about art museum is were the antidote to the digital illness, right? <laughs> you know, the ADD of society. Uh, we are that antidote, and so spend the time. And you know, maybe don't look at the rest of the museum, but look at one or two works of art and spend the afternoon. <laughs> so, and the operative question would be, what mm. is this artist trying to communicate to me? That's right. Uh, and I mean, do you have to be right about that, or can you have a difference of opinion oh. with someone else? No, completely. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, there is, you know, in many cases, there is a right answer because the artist does have an intention. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would say that, uh, uh, um, you know, you, you need to take it in and you need to enjoy it and you, do, and you need to understand it. And, uh, and you know, that's, that's, that's what learning is all about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> Sean, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, and what I'd like to talk about is how this extends to the community how the art that you're doing extends to other forms of art in our state. Mm -hmm. This is really exciting, exciting discussion. I know it will be exciting. We'll be right back after this short break. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by and I said, what's happening guys? They told me they were making music. There were a lot of people that claimed they had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of played some really nice sounds. Today, inspired musically about life. There's 
said I could play, so any chance to play at all, you know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, I saw it do it. We are back, we are here, we are ruminating and learning. We <laughs> certainly are. Sean O'Hara, he's the director of the Honolulu Art Museum. And uh, where we left this very interesting discussion is uh, the extension of the art in that museum to other, other forms of art in the state, uh, where it is, where it can go, and how do we get there? Big question. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, uh, as, 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 as some people refer to us, a rock in the middle of the Pacific. Um, we're the most isolated inhabited landmass uh, on the planet. Um, so, you know, we have some natural advantages, um, but we have some natural disadvantages. So, uh, fostering and developing uh, uh, artists and art communities in, 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 in our society is, is, a, is a challenge. Um, but we have a, a wealth of talent uh, and diversity and uh, uh, opinion and viewpoints in in our population, um, and I think that's unique, uh, perhaps uh, uh, in the United States, if not the world. Yeah, yeah. And, and really extraordinary. And there's, there's a human capital, human resource capital kind of thing there, that sometimes we don't recognize. Yeah, I've uh, I've been uh, in the past. I've been on um, um, uh, tourist boards uh, of other cities, and and um, and. Uh, uh, you know, people recognize that the cultural tourist, if, if we can talk about tourism or in economic development, for example, um, spends approximately seven times as much as the, the normal tourist. Uh, the tourist that's just maybe they're just there for the weather. Um, so there's a huge opportunity, you know, as climate changes, as um, we lose our, uh, our uh, unique uh, advantage over other places, uh, maybe price-wise, uh, maybe weather-wise even, uh, I think that what we can really fall back on, and I think we should, is, is, our, uh, is our human capital, uh, who we are as a people. And we uh, have this uh, cultural advantage. Um, people know about the culture here in Hawaii, and they will come for the food, and they'll come for the music, and they'll come for the art. Um, and that's something that uh, will never go away, will only, we'll only get better. And so I think that uh, I think that uh, you know, as I'm, I'm a big person for planning and looking ahead because I think it uh, makes life easier. Yeah. Um, but you know, as we look ahead and we see, well, where are we going to be 20 years from now? Yeah. Um, you know, particularly with, as I say, environmental changes and so on. Um, uh, I think that our people are really the 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 asset that we have to rely on. And uh, like I said, I think we are uh, very different from other places. And uh, we have a natural advantage in some cases, and I think we should take advantage of that. Now, you've been involved, um, and I hope you'll be involved on a continuing, increasing basis in, in an attempt to bring the arts together. Yes. Um, and that's really important. We need that. We can't be silo on that, because together we are much more yeah. than we are individually. Well, you know, as we say, we're all in the same canoe. Yeah. We should all paddle in the same direction. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think the sort of uh, either the internal competition model or the in, or the infighting doesn't doesn't necessarily work when you're on a isolated landmass uh, with limited resources <laughs> right. um, and, and and limited options. I mean, again, you know, we uh, 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 um, uh, we have a unique position and um, planning out ahead. Um, I think all the organizations. Uh, need to uh, work together. What would you um, plan? Well, uh, l l let's just say that, um, uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, uh, we need to emphasize our natural advantages. And uh, our culture is, is one of our natural advantages here. Um, our diversity of culture and our, and our, our, our interesting and multidimensional aspect. And I think, the, um, uh, I think the various arts organizations, if they work together, to create a, a long-range plan, um, they can then approach uh, other leaders in the community uh, to understand that plan and to sort of create another plan for uh, the state and our population uh, 20 years from now. Again, you, you can only have a map if you, you can only have a road map if you know where you're going. And uh, I, I, I'm not exactly sure if we know where we're going as a state. You know, um, there is a point, and the reason why I said we, we have limited options is there is a point where we'll run out of land, 
water, <laughs> all sorts of things. Um, so what is that capacity? And if, and if we reach that capacity, then what do we have? So the, so the idea really is, is uh, you know, what sort of society we, do we want to create? Yeah. And uh, the, the, the cultural organizations, because they center on human creativity and really the creativity of our people, um, they have to, to lead that discussion. Uh, and I say it's a discussion because it's not that these organizations are going to tell people what to do. You know, ultimately, these organizations need to be relevant, and they, they're, they're going to be relevant by reflecting the needs and desires of the people. Right. Better society, better, better relations with people, better quality of life individually. Yes. Uh, but uh, let, me, let me ask yes. you this. You know, I get, I get a couple of factors in here. One is we can attract people, <coughs> uh, tourists, mm -hmm. inclu mm -hmm. including cultural tourists. Right. The other thing is do we want to attract them with what we bring in or what we create? Because, I mean, you suggest that we have a lot of creativity. We have a lot of possibilities to express our culture and, mm -hmm. and our creativity. Uh, where's the focus in the plan? Where's the focus there? Well, I think that we have to have both because you can't foster creativity and develop creativity here in a vacuum. You have to bring in knowledge from the outside. Um, you need our people here to travel, to see new ideas, new solutions, and then come back and bring them back here. Um, uh, we are very good at shipping out our young population, never to see them again. Yeah, sure. Um, we almost lost you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, and, and I would say that uh, all my classmates have not come back, really. Mm -hmm. or at least the ones that left, they've, they've, they're, they're, they're pursuing careers uh, around the world. Um, coming back is not uh, an easy option for them. Mm -hmm. um, but they have a knowledge, because they have a knowledge of, of the local scene, and then they have a knowledge of the outside world. And um, the artists in the exhibition, Satoru Abe, for example, and Harry Sujidana, uh, these were two artists who uh, left their home in Honolulu and ended up in New York City, uh, traveling around and learning and learning from artists and, and getting degrees and education and winning awards and then coming back. Um, and, and the uh, uh, the only way that I think we can develop our society is by bringing in new knowledge and, and new yeah. ideas. Let and, it breathe. And best practice. You can't have it, you can't focus down on one, one small culture point. You have to let it breathe in terms of right. you know, the world process. Right. And then what you have is, then you have people here who start creating things because they bring in new ideas. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, people from the outside will come and look at these new, at these so new ideas. So we become a center. Yes. And, and we can be... Um, because we have such a diverse population. And so people will naturally go to all four corners of the earth uh, versus uh, you know, just moving to one area or another. Um, so you know, we have influences from Japan and from Southeast Asia and from California and from Europe and from Africa and yeah, South America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just, just you know, in our population alone. So it makes it r even richer that way. It, it does, it does, and y and you can see it in the food that we offer. You know? <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's sort of the plate lunch uh, uh, approach to uh, to culture. <laughs> so the, the last question I want to pose to you is how how do we get there? I mean, accepting everything you said, and I totally agree with it. Um, and you know, making a plan that goes off in the future and connects up art and makes an art community, a world-class art community that will yeah. bring people here and give us greater satisfaction, cohesiveness as a community, you know, engaged in intellectual pursuits like that. How do we get there? It's not easy because you have to train kids. We're not training them enough. Right. I know that's got to be part of the plan. Well, I'll go back to what I said about planning. I think you have to understand where you need to be. Um, and you have to plan out a generation ahead. So I'm talking, you know, 20 years, 25 years ahead. Um, I think that uh, you have to be incredibly realistic with the challenges. You know, we can't be uh, um, shy, hazakashi, or anything like that. We have to, you know, say, look, um, we have limits where we are. Um, uh, you know, shipping is, a, is, is expensive. Um, um, bringing people here is expensive. Having people go out. Um, so what are the challenges involved in that? And, um, and y you know, once we understand that, and we're not, again, uh, I have to say that uh, growing up in Hawaii, we didn't really worry a lot uh, about much when, when I was young because, you know, the, 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 the days always nice, uh, you never get lost, you know, food falls on your head, um, uh, you know, clothing is optional, you know, that kind of thing. So, so you know, tomorrow will always be fine, right? Yeah. But I think that, uh, you know, now that we see with global 
climate change and, and uh, economic things. And uh, I, I, we can see that the world doesn't stand still. And if we're not moving uh, uh, ahead at a good pace, we, we're not even going to catch up. So I think it's important that we have these long-range plans. I also think it's important that we all work together, that we're not all in our little silos uh, communicating with ourselves and not coordinating things, because it's, it's a waste of resources. We don't have that many resources, being an island. And, uh, and, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to compete with each other when you know, it's probable that our vision is, is similar you know, sure. 20 years from now. Um, because we have limited choices. So um, I think that really it's going to require um, the state of Hawaii to have a vision, uh, to know what it wants to be when it grows up. Um, it, it, it needs to have all the arts organizations, uh, for example, um, um, coordinated uh, amongst themselves. They have to coordinate with the education system, which is the lifeblood of our society. Um, we have to work with the business community. So it's really about coming uh, up with a master plan, which I know is a, is a, is a pretty uh, 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 um, um, you know, remote possibility in some ways, but it's actually the only way you're going to get there. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it, and, and solving major problems uh, are not going to happen overnight. Yeah. Uh, and, and the worst thing is the, 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 the election cycles are so quick. Right, so thinking 20 years out is not necessarily in the interest, best interest of some, you know, certain leaders. But really, it has to be. Yeah. Um, and I and I have faith in our people because um, uh, we always plan out in many ways. Um, um, we we think about multi generations. Uh, people are now living longer, so you literally have three, four generations living together. Um, you know, the the uh, the the answer is in front of our eyes. We just have to. We just have to come to the realization that, that, uh, that this sort of planning and coordination is important. So what role do you hope to play? What role do you think the art museum should play? Um, well, I, I think that uh, uh, being able to foster discussion and to be able to maybe marshal uh, both interests and resources uh, would be helpful. Um, we are one of the largest, if not the largest, sort of cultural organization of our kind in, in the state. Um, and it's so we have the responsibility of, of, of working with other organizations to make sure that uh, um, everyone has their say. You know, at the end of the day, it's not about um, uh, being right. It, it's, about, it's about getting it right, you know? And so, um, you know, as, to make as informed a decision as possible by having other organizations involved is important. Um, I kind of joke that, you know, in Hawaii, um, the answer is to unionize. But, um, <laughs> but, but it, it is kind of that. It's really getting those groups together to, to, to also form a critical mass so that when we speak to the leaders of other sure. areas, uh, then, they, then they're listening to us because we have a certain authority. Well, I hope we can discuss this further, Sean. I, I hope uh, you treat this as a... You mean this isn't a three-hour conversation? No, no, oh, no okay. it is, Darn, but it's yeah. very kind of compressed. Right, right. <laughs> and I hope you'll come back, and I hope we can have this, this conversation again and again at this table. I look forward to it. Thank you, Sean. Yes, thank you so Sean much. Sean O'Hara, director you. of the Art Museum, the Honolulu Art Museum. Great to have him on the show. Great to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.